Hello friends. Today we will be discussing on velocity product console component walkthrough, wherein we will cover in briefly what all components are involved and how to use them. So my name is Suresh Vinjari and welcome back to my channel. If you are keen to learn in velocity stuff, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell notification for new videos. So let's get started. Uh, moving on to the foundation section. Uh, in this foundation section, uh, we have attributes and pick lists. Uh, these two components are the, the building blocks in order to configure the products, right? Uh, let, let's get started with attributes. So again, right here, the similar fashion, if you want to create a new attribute, you need to uh, click first plus like uh, here, and you can, uh, you, uh, you'll be asked, what is the attribute name, code, what is the category and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to uh, look what all the attributes are configured currently, you can search this, right? Again, here, it, it works similarly here. I'll just search completely. And one of the one of the attribute I will open, uh, let's consider as a capacity, right? So yeah, so uh, attribute name, name is capacity and code as ATT. So this is the naming convention usually we will follow, like ATT means attribute. PKL means a pick list, right? Uh, product namely we give as OPP or uh, based on the requirement we'll do that, yeah. So it is better to uh, uh, give the naming convention, right? And every every attribute should be associated to the attribute category, right? And uh, here, uh, every attribute should be uh, have a data type. Uh, so within uh, velocity, all these all, you know, supported attribute types right so so this is of a pick list we can have text number checkbox date time multi pick list percentage and currency right and yeah so if it is a pick list you need to provide the pick list so if if your attribute uh, is of type pick list uh, before creating the attribute you should be having you know the velocity pick list values right and uh, there are a few more configurations available here, uh, filterable, encrypted, exclude from basket cache and all that stuff, right? Uh, yeah, and one more important, once you create this, uh, you need to assign this attribute uh, to different object type, right? So currently, you know, uh, we we need this attribute into the product level. So we have checked this uh, product to object, right? Sometimes what happens is, we need to use this attribute at the object type hierarchy level. So that time we need to make sure, you know, object type, object type object is selected and saved, right? Yeah, uh, so uh, this is where you, you can get to know, you know, what is the attribute uh, for which category it is assigned and what is the type and you put the pick list, what is the pick list name, right? Moving to the pick list now, uh, I will go and search the capacity as a pick list, which, which is used in capacity attribute. Yeah, here it is, uh, capacity. And as I mentioned earlier, we are using PKL as a naming convention. Right? And this is of type text now. And uh, so it is always uh, uh, required to have active as a status. So uh, when we say that, uh, pick list, right? So it should be associated with one or more uh, pick list items. So here we have a different type of uh, uh, data available, right? So here the storage, so we have mentioned. So if we click one of those, so text value, label and code, right? So this will be shown up in the UI, right? And even this has sequence as well as the effectivity and it should be active. So uh, coming to the pricing, so we have price list, pricing plan and pricing variable, right? Uh, let's explore on the price list. So uh, if you want to create a new price list, so you have to provide the price list name, price list code, and uh, you need to associate this price list with a price book. It can be a standard price book or custom price book. Right? So currently we have one standard, it can be associated. If you have a custom price book that can be associated to that. Uh, if, if the new, uh, let's see. Um, is going to be a child of 
some other price list that can be added here. Right? We can maintain a sequence, and this section will be, you know, uh, if, if org is supported by multi currency, then uh, the available multi currency codes will be shown up here. And this is effectivity rules, right? Uh, we need to make sure everything uh, is active and effectivity has been provided. Let's go back and search what is existing price lists are available. So we have B2B and B2C. We'll open B2C. Uh, in general properties, uh, this is the name of the price list. This is the code where, again, the naming convention is like PL, right? And uh, this B2C price list is associated to standard price book. Uh, and this is the root price book. We can see because it does not associate with the price list, right? And yeah, uh, this is hierarchy. Uh, you know, if the price list is associated to the parent price list, the hierarchy can be uh, seen up here. Yeah. So the web channel price list is associated to uh, B2C. That's where it is showing up. If I go here, web channel price list under the parent price list, the B2C price list is showing up. Right. Uh, the price list entries. So for this particular uh, B2C price list, what are the available price list entries? All will be segregated under this, right? And uh, what are the products names and what respective price list entry will be shown up here, right? Uh, again, along with that, it will be shown up like what type of variable is it recurring monthly or on time standard? And what is the pricing element, right? So it will be shown up here and the effectivity range. The pricing element are associated to this price list entry. All will be categorized here. Uh, it may be one-time standard or recurring, right? All that. So again, <clears throat> we can associate price list entry to the context roles. So uh, if if, uh, if there is a business requirement wherein you know, we need to create a context dimension which will be having a mapping, right? And that context map uh, context dimension has to be evaluated in a rule condition. Uh, once that rule condition is done, we need to associate a uh, rule with a rule set, and that rule set has to be associated to price list, right? And whenever that condition is ma uh, 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 evaluated true, the context rule will get applied, and this price list changes will get applied to that particular uh, product or price list. Uh, moving on to pricing variable, as again mentioned earlier, so uh, for that, put uh, in the org, what all pricing variable are available that will be shown up here. Like earlier, we just saw that uh, what is the standard uh, one-time standard price, one-time fee, recurring fee, and all that stuff will be shown up here. Uh, pricing plan. Pricing plan is related to <clears throat> uh, the execution steps, which involved in order to derive the the price of the product when we add a product to the hybrid card we'll go to a series of steps uh, in order to give that particular value right so uh, there are uh, uh, these 10 steps right uh, we can customize it so wherever uh, we need a, a customization we can add an extra step involved uh, let's say uh, if, if your product required a tribute based pricing so be, uh, that has to be added before pricing context, right? So uh, in order to add attribute-based pricing, we should be adding, uh, we should be creating a, a calculation matrix, calculation procedure, and that calculation procedure has to be added under here. It, uh, the, in the parameters, we need to mention what is the calculation procedure name, what is the uh, calculation matrix name for so that, and we need to derive uh, what sequence it is, right? And what is the method? So for calculation uh, metrics, right? Get metrics is the method we have to mention it here. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, so uh, for a pricing plan, uh, we need to make sure, right? Uh, this has been configured in the uh, custom setting that comes under CPQ configuration setup. So under here, Yeah, default pricing plan setup. So if you have a custom, we need to make uh, changes in this place. 
uh, yeah, but uh, make sure uh, if you are making changes at this level, it will impact the whole or if you have any other project uh, that will get impacted as well. All right, uh, time policy and time plan are mainly related to what time the particular uh, product or uh, promotion should get start and uh, when it has to end, right? Uh, that's more on uh, related to time plan and time policy. We will we will have a separate uh, a session on this. When we have to deal with promotion, we will go through all this. Uh, coming to the string translation, uh, string translation mainly we will use this concept uh, when when we are dealing with you know uh, multi language thing like uh, we are configuring our product let's say in English, but a customer who are trying to use uh, these products or uh, our reps right sales rep. They want to see these products into some other language, let's say a Spanish or Chinese, then we have to use a string translation. Along with the string translation, we should be making sure that relevant uh, setup has to be done for that. Uh, coming to the objects, the object type uh, uh, help us to uh, have that inheritance, right? So what, what uh, it meant is, so you can you can uh, configure the attributes right at one place, and if you are creating a ch child object type, the configured attributes at the parent object type will be automatically inherited using inheritance as a relationship, right? So we we mainly deal with a product object. Let's go here object type, and if you see here uh, there are few. Object has already created. Uh, let's explore few. Uh, we have multiple child products. Uh, I will go inside mobile plan product spec underneath data plan. Let's say uh, under data plan product spec, if I add uh, two more attributes, uh, if I add and I'm creating one more object type under data plan, though whole, right, uh, like three plus two, five attributes will be inherited to the new object type, right? And that is the advantage what we have. All uh, right, that, that's about uh, the object type. Again, uh, these object types can be uh, used uh, project specific, but we won't be having a control over it. Uh, any other project folks can come and modify, and uh, that may have an impact on uh, other projects as well. So to get rid of that, uh, we can have an approach of, you know, adding product specific attributes, or we should be having a, a clear understanding, you know, uh, uh, other project team should not be using one another's object type. 